Good morning. My name is Jose Luis Banos. I born in Spain. Uh, I am a dental technician, a surgical assistant certified. So the workflow that I'm going to show today uh, is the work that I usually do every day. So hopefully it's easy for me to do this presentation. So the journey to final is uh, going from immediate low surgery to the final. The collaboration that we have with the clinicians, technicians, front desk, courier guys, and everybody here is important. Different impression techniques, material like uh, Argent, PMMA, Anas Gun, Acryline, or Surface for the Zirconia. So before I start, first of all, I want to say thank you to two people. One is um, the one that he showed me starting in this business of the hybrid. This guy is here sitting, is Dr. Mauricio Herbas. He's a surgical prosthodontist. And the second one is Florian Steinberg. He's a German guy. He's uh, the head of KOL of Anas Den that he showed me all the tricks for the, to apply this kind of material. Before I start my journey, I have three points to say. The first one, and I wanted that you guys um, know, for me, the more important in life is my family. And I always say that family first and then teeth. I want to my that to everybody because I don't want to get any time off from my family to put in my laboratory. So that is period. So this is the important thing. The second thing that I always say is, and I want to thank to my second family, that in this case, my second family is my team. So we do everything together. Uh, I try to train them. So all the protocol that we do is effective and nice. And the commitment of life that we have, and I say every day, we say less, put a smile in a patient face today. So this is why we do it. The third guy, or doctor, with all the respect, is somebody that says something that impressed me. And he says that nobody should die with a teeth in a glass of water. So this, this doctor, that I am very proud of him, he's the father of the implant dentistry, is Dr. Branimar. And I put in my presentation because that impressed me too. So, continue with my journey. I have a bag. It's an imaginary bag. I don't have that bag in the lab, but it's an imaginary. I have a couple of things inside. So the first thing that I have in my bag, and it's very important, is outsourcing partners. That is important in my laboratory because I can grow more without buying things. The second thing in my bag is understanding the process. This type of case we need to understand in order to complete properly everything. The third one is the protocol. How you gonna do that case and how you plan in that case. The next one is the material. As a technician, we need to know the material. We need to know the stability. We need to do the color. We need to see what the material is gonna give us. And the other one is the communication. It's very important for the clinician, technicians, and employees get communicating in order to do this type of case. And the sixth one, and no less important, is a little bit touch of passion or love when you do these cases. So we're gonna start with the first one. And I wanna say thank you to Arjen. He's my uh, outsourcing partner. And I think that is very important for me because I talked to my wife, the administrator, like how many equipment you're gonna buy for a dental laboratory. You have already two or three million, you have three printers, you have hand pieces, you have oven. So how much you wanna buy to, comp to cover all your work? And you know that every month is different. One month you have a lot of work, the second month you don't have work, but you have to still pay the bank all those equipments. So this is why I partner with Arjun, because I, I have overflow of work, so I send it to them. In two days, you have it back if the weather is good. Because in Memphis sometimes, <laughs> but that's fine. But um, we can do that with Arjun. We can do abandments, we can do hybrid abandments. We can do precious metal. Do you remember before we have a lot of plenty of bag of gold in the, you know, like a six, seven thousand dollars in your desk? When you send it to them, they share you whatever they use and that's it. And you spend the other money in a trip with your family, for example. 
and the overflow of the bar. That is important. Understanding the process is understanding everything from the beginning to the, to the end. But in the middle to this understanding, you have something very important in dentistry now, that is the digital dentistry. So in this point, we have something called design software or scanners. So for me, the one that I use in, this, in my career is a three shade. I buy the three shade 15 years ago from Argent. We had a D2000 scanner and we had a 305. So what we do with this, so it's easy. If I get my entire scan, that is the 305, I can, I can um, do the impression, can be final or can be for, for an immediate surgical, surgical. The second thing that I do is uh, I design my models and then I print it, articulate my models. Why am I going to do that? Maybe I am an old technician, but I want to have something physical good in my hands. Because sometimes in the screen I see things that is not real. So if I have something physical in my hands, I can plan in better my case. The third thing that I do is a tray for impression. When I do this tray, I do it before with denture. But I see a Dr. Rosen has something similar. So I put a handle in a denture and I use in the patient teeth. So when I do this, when I take the impression in surgery, I take it with this tray and I can preserve the vertical dimension of the patient. For me, it's very important that for a temporary. Then we're going to have time to change the vertical dimension or whatever the clinician want to do. But for the beginning, I think it, for me, it's very important. And the last thing is to do the wax up. You do your wax up before the surgery so you know more or less everything and you get a lot of information before everything is complete. So all this, I do in my favorite software, that is three shade. I know have nothing to do with Exoca, Blender, Max Mixer. I think they are amazing, Circle Sand, but I working with this for 14 years, so I am very comfortable with this. So I don't want to change it to another one and start learning again. So the next thing that we have is the protocol. The protocol, for my cases, the first thing that I do, I get a picture from the patient, and then I do a smile design. The more important thing doing this smile design, if I want to suggest to the clinician or the surgical prostodontist is how much bone he needs to reduce in order to show a nice smile for the final. Because you do a hybrid and you not do the bone reduction, probably then in the final they're going to try to open the vertical dimension and everything looks funny. So bone reduction is very important for these cases or for this treatment plan. Um, the next thing about the protocol, if I do a surgical impression, I use a regular, uh, I use a faster hard body, and I took a traditional impression. The, the thing that I do traditional impression because I feel or I read that during the osseointegration, integration, if the impression is around 112 microns, of perfection, everything is going to be fine when the implant gets also integrated. And then I use my bite. So the bite that I designed, everything is had the same vertical dimension. Obviously, nothing is perfect, but it's very close. So that is important. When I do my final, I do photogrammetry. Why I not use an uh, intra oral scan? So I'm going to show you why. When you Take an impression in intraoral scan. From the implant one to the third, you're going to have 112 microns of distortion. So that means that you can do three unit breaches, you can use single implants, and things like that is fine. But when you pass the third to the sixth, you're going to have 246 microns of distortion, and the acceptable for a full arch is 100 microns. More than that is no good for passivity. So this is why. We began into the business with photogrammetry. We use precision implant capture. It's a peak system. And a full arch only had four to six microns of distortion. So it's a peace of mind for me. So this is why I do all my final case with this. And my protocol is easy. I take a final impression. I send it to the clinician uh, titanium bar. 
and I send them the prototype. The prototype is living with the patient for a couple of weeks, weeks, and then they come back, adjust the bite, and we go to the final. So material, we're gonna talk now the material to use it. When we do, when we use um, for immediate load, before I start using some printing hybrids, but I find out that after a couple of weeks, it's weak, everything breaks, we need to change that to the patient of, of repairing the mouth. I'm not thinking that we should touch nothing in that stage of the surgery, so for me it's better to meal the PMMA. We use a multi-layer direct to the implant or with TI base. So this is, a, this is a sample of one case. This case have a um, TI basis request by the clinician. So you see that, you're gonna see the outcome. And uh, also some people told me about why you do that, it's so pretty or whatever, the patient is not gonna come back, but we have to think about that the patient is already paid for something good. Why are you gonna pay for something bad? If they already pay for that. So I'd say do it right, do it once, and try to copy the final. So that is gonna be easy to reproduce that in any material you use for the final, in this case, zirconia. So for the final, we come in uh, to the RGNHT, 98 by 25, we use three different colors. We do OM3, B1, A1, and A2. And then we use soprano sulfate that is a liquid ceramic. We had that in paste or we had that in powder. The reason that I use this material is because this material together is made me a nice look and is similar to the polymers and the composite. So you can see the outcome. This is for a lower, the lower case zirconia, sorry. Um, so they come in like that. Now we're gonna talk about the communication. What is the communication for me, and it's important. The communication for me is like a puzzle. So when I have a puzzle, I have so many people inside the puzzle. So that can be the courier guy, the front desk, the assistant, the technician, the doctors, everybody is there because we need to do something for a special patient, person that is a patient. So we have to be together. So we're gonna put everybody here. So we put everybody here and the first thing that I want to know for this patient is a patient history. Why I like to know the patient history? Because I want to know why the patient is doing this treatment or why they're going to take the teeth off. If it's for medical problem, medication, TMJ, or poor hygiene. So that is going to let me know in advance what material is the best for this type of patient. So that is very important for me. The second thing is the patient expectation. What the patient want. I don't know you guys, but sometimes they send you a picture for the first communion, bloody. You don't see the TSA, I wanna be like that. And, and the patient is 82 years old. So we need to explain to the patient, the structure of the face already changed. We're gonna cut the bone. Everything is gonna be different. Maybe we can copy the form of the tooth, square, obey it, but you know, sometimes we're gonna be close, so, but we need to explain to the patient, it's very important, to, so we can know what we can do. So the other thing that I do in the protocol is a, a lot of visualization of the process. So for example, if, I, if, I gonna take, if we're gonna take an impression, uh, we have visual reference. In this case, we put the patient by, I take an impression, and then I see in the lab, more or less, if I am close, that is not accurate, but with the visual thing, I know that I am close. I mean, maybe I had the buy off, but I am close. <laughs> so something like that helped me out. The next thing in the protocol is the multi uni abandonments. Multi uni abandonment for me, it should be under sub gingival. The screw channel, the multi uni abandonment has to be at tissue level. And that is very important because you have to have a proper emerging profile, a good cleansable restoration. The next thing about the multi unit abandonment is the angulation. We need to know if we have, a, for example, an overbite patient where the, the mandible is here and the upper, so the maxilla is here. 
You know where you're going to angle the multi-unit. You can angle the multi-unit back because you're going to have thicker restoration and it's for nothing. So you go forward to Bucan trying to meet the occlusion in the upper. So everything, the forces is going to be straight and no back and forth. So that is very important. And the last thing important here, and we have a prostodont here, is the occlusion. Nobody know about occlusion. I study everywhere for hybrid. Nobody can tell me what is the real occlusion. And it's true because every patient is different. So we use some mutually protect, protected occlusion for single arch, and we use occlusion balance when we do double arch, like a denture, OK? But this is the thing that I say. You can do a shallow anterior guy, can a guy unilateral balance, group function. That is acceptable, but the responsible for this is the clinician. So at least you know what you face. I have here um, a study for the ICP where they say there is lack of scientific evidence regarding the occlusal for implants. So, OK. So I am fine with that. <laughs> but this is the two occlusions that I, that I usually do in this type of, of cases. So now we're going to talk a bit about a passion or love for the cases. So we're going to talk about zirconia a little bit. And this case that, gonna, this case that you're going to see now is uh, made with RGNHT. Then we make a PMMA, OK? And of course, we always put, in this type of cases, a titanium bar. And the reason to put the titanium bar is because I use photogrammetry and I walk directly from the computer to mill. I can do TI bases because I losing, I losing perfection in the feet. So this is why we do titanium bar. And also I think it's better and stronger and protect more the zirconia and everything. And you can, you can get some shock absorption energy from the bite to the titanium and then it's going to the implant. You need. As a technician, we want to protect the implants, not the restoration. Because the restoration, something happened, the doctors pay again, or maybe half. Or, I don't know. Well, they pay something. So we can cover the material. And we can remain. It's digital. We do again. But when a patient losing an implant, we lose everything. And the patient, too. So as a technician, we, not, we need to know about materials, because it's very important. So this is the thing. So this case that I'm going to present now is with Dr. Luis Alicea in Tampa. He cannot place implant in the upper. He cannot play implant in the upper because the bone is not proper, no, it's not good. So we do uh, Argent HT zirconia and PMMA on top. We mix in material in the lower. We use a soprano surface. In the top, we, do, we use acrylamide and anas gun in top to mimic. Any material absorbing energy, energy of shock is perfect because everything is stopped there and not going to the implant and don't cause loose bone and then implants gone. So this is the case. This is the lower zirconia. And you want to see how they look in the mouth. This is why I'm using this, um, this amazing material because if you see lower is zirconia, upper is PMMA, and you, I am probably a 90% close in the tissue and in the color of the material, even though we use a different material. So now to tell you something very important before I, I go to my hand on, I want to see that you guys see a picture. And, and this is why I do this kind of cases. For me, I am very romantic, maybe, but I like to see the patient. And when the patient look in my eye and tell me that it's, uh, it's, they can't even smile for five years, they can go out, she's shy, or he, and then they give me the responsibility to make that. Because, and unfortunately, or unfortunately, they pay for our work. Because even the surgeon goes, say, I do a sign of leaf, and I put you bone, and I angle the implant. The patient pay for half and a smile again. OK, so this is a teamwork. Because if the surgeon is not placed properly the implants, we cannot make the teeth. And if he made the properly the implant, we do a crappy work, so it's not going to look good. So it's a teamwork. But the thing that everybody sees is our teeth. So this is why I want to bring that picture. 
because this is the more important per, uh, reason for me to see a, a person who smile and be happy again. And this is the picture when I see the eyes after the delivery, not even talking to me. I know that she's very happy and everything complete on me. I already paid for that and then I get the check. No? But that's the first payment. See a patient like that. Before I go to my hand on, I'm going to put you a brief video with the patient that I do the last quarter, the 2023. They have a surgical, everything is temporary, and I wish that you enjoy, and thank you very much. Okay, so today demonstration, I'm going to do some surface here, uh, because we don't have, um, of course, we don't have an oven, uh, because they are hot, and they, we can move it to do this kind of thing. I already pre-do the thing, I'm gonna do it my, myself and I'm gonna show you how they come, like a, if we even cooking, so how everything come. Yeah. There. Okay, now you can. Okay, we're gonna use for teeth, flu shade. All right. B. Beautiful, thank you. So we're gonna put in the palette. Now we're gonna use, uh, we're gonna use um, flu stain shadow. This stain, I mix it together with the gray. Okay, and I use it to make some translucency and break the white of the zirconia. The color, so I use it with gray. So I mix these together 50 and 50. So I mix it together. Okay, then I'm gonna use a blue navy. and a little bit of red stained brown to make some definition in the cervical area. And we finally we have the last one for the teeth, is the white, it's called, it's called cotton. So let's start with the teeth. The first thing that I do, I use is some I'm using some liquid, so you can use, usually you don't use that. This is for glaze only, so you use um, the liquid fluid, okay? Don't mix the glaze with this liquid because it's not good. It's going to get bubbles and things like that, so. So I mix the whole thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I put the liquid in the whole surface of the um, zirconia. Then I get my favorite brush, like this one. So, this is the brush I'm gonna use. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint in. or the cervical area with this. So I do it like that. Then I come in. This way.
This color is like salmon. It's not red, intense. Kind of want to get too much red around the tooth. So that is my first layer that I do it before I start painting the teeth. I want to see where the teeth, cervical area start and when the red start. So I can do it that way. Now I'm going to get, okay, I'm going to start painting the teeth. So I'm going to do cervical. Passing the brush like that. You're going to interpose him a little bit. Very careful not mixing with the pink. And you extend it to the incisor. So you're going to see that you start changing the chrome a little bit for the cervical area. Kind of can be a little darker. So we put a little extra of this. So let's do this. And we go from here. Okay. Now we're gonna paint in a cervical area with, with the mixer, mixture that I already did, that is um gray and purple. So I'm gonna go with the serv with the inside solar area with this. So we're going to block the value. We're going to bring the value down in the tooth. Because remember, zirconia is white. And the value is a little high, especially in, in the incisal area of the tooth. So I put this mixing together. Make sure that you put in the both sides of the distant mesial. Because remember, the patient is going to smile laterally too. And somebody can see it. Okay, so now we're going to put some blue first in the distal angle. In the kinda in both. So as you can see, you start seeing the translucency of the material coming out. And we're going to put some Shade A underneath. Now with the blue, I'm gonna get the other blue. It's here. It's Navy blue, I think, or dark blue. So with that, we're going to try to mimic the mammalons of the teeth. Be careful with this material, it's too strong. So make sure that you know overplay with this. As you see, you can see now mammalons. 
Now we're gonna close everything like a sandwich. So we're gonna close it like that. And you can do it something like that. Trying to don't put it too uniform. So it's not looking so unreal. So we see the difference with a little paint. So now we're gonna continue with the tissue. So now I'm gonna use some red. Gonna shave my brush. Now we're gonna use some red here. This is very intense red, so be careful with this. And then we're gonna put some combination of the root with yellow. Orange, they call orange. For me it's more yellow, but it's fine. So you're missing this guy together. So you don't see. Let's use sun red now. That way you know where the camera's at. Oh, thank you. Does that work? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're going to call it interproximal with red. So we're going to have something like that, more or less. Okay, so something like that. Now, after we do that, we're gonna get we're gonna get some enamel. It's a pure enamel, and we're gonna. Sprinkle over. We're gonna sprinkle over the over the frame. So this is the thing that we do. So this is the thing that we do, as you see, and it's made me, it's made me, um, it's made me a, a surface like a, like a sandpaper. So when I'm gonna put my other material, it's rough, so you can put it on top, and it's no lining everywhere. So after we cook this, I'm gonna put that in the oven, imaginary oven, we have it and we're gonna get something coming from the oven like that. So you see all the zirconia around, you see all the colors and everything coming good. The next thing we're gonna work with, with this guy now. So we're gonna put the first bake here. And for the first bake, we're gonna use we're gonna use um, black orange. So now we're gonna use a porcelain that is paste. The first one that I like to use is the gingerbread dark.
So it's like the first thing, the first one that I put there, mixing with a little liquid if you want. It's the, the way it's like a composite. Then the second one is going to be gingiva orange. A little touch of violet, in your violet. And the last one, and no less important, is the light, gingival light. You can do this case in one sh in one bake, but because maybe I had the time, I do a couple bakes, so I feel more comfortable. But usually, this is the way that we do it. So let's do it. Okay. So I put a dark, pink, dark in the whole structure like that. So with this tool, it's a rubber one, you can move the material around. You're going into Proximo. I like to use these brushes because I can use them in different ways. So I know how to buy that, so many brushes to do this. So now we're gonna put the orange. And I put the orange where the root is supposed to be, it's here. Here, 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 and here. Let me see, I think I forgot my other brush. Uh, so now with a brush like that, you use, I use that one for composite, one with um, for porcelain, so you can tack all the porcelain like that with this one. You go like that, go back, down. With this instrument. You can start waxing or mimic the cervical area of the restoration by pushing down a little bit. I'm going to do it that way.
Now I go with a pink, light pink. It's a brush that you can use for that. But I made something myself. I'm going to patent that next year. So please don't copy. So I make, I make a sponge. So you can track like that. Because when I use my brush, the problem is that all the hair of the brush is going inside and then I need to take it out. So I make that, okay, with any sponge. Mm. You fill it out with liquid, you know, like a fluid liquid. Clean with that, don't with water. Don't use water for this material. So now you can go like that and cover the whole thing with a light pink, stand everything down. So now, <clears throat> before I bake, I get this and I create my cervical area with this instrument, like you waxing before. It's the same, this is why the pretty of this material that you can treat like a wax. So you can do whatever you need to do, like composite. So after bake, you're going to have something like that.
Okay guys, this is another sample I have here, so you can see it, how this material, depends on the color of the tissue, so you can change this color, put it more, less red or more less red, something like that, but also you can stain the teeth, as you see, and you can make a case probably in an hour, hour and a half, no problem, no bubbles, no mucho problema. And that's it. If I want to show you before we finish something with the PMMA, so you see PMMA is the same. So if I do PMMA, first of all, I'm gonna I'm gonna do um, a little bit only, but if we do the PMMA, the, the thing that I do is I cut back first a little bit like that. Because we need to have some space for the translucency of the papilla in the, the interproximal area. So if I do composite, I do it in the same way. I try to not mix in brushes, but today is fine. So you do that, and if you use, um, if you use um, composite, so we're gonna do the same way, and this is the view, the preview of the of this, the preview of this material. So if you wanna do composite, you have red. Okay, you have red. Okay, and then that we have red. I have cream. Okay, and then we have bluish too. So what I do with this, what I do with this is make sure that you don't mix it the brushes. But what I do with this, follow the same protocol. So I go in. I go in because we don't have the, the same color that before, so what I do, oof, this gets set fast for the light. Sorry. So because we don't have the same color and the need, so I mix in cream and red together so we can get the same salmon that we use it for the same salmon that we use it for for the porcelain. So we do the same technique. You wanna do an upper and lower, one is PMMA. So you're gonna follow the same step. In that way, your color is gonna be matching one to the other. But you use different material. I know me that you don't have good material in the market. It's a beautiful material in the market now to do this. But the reason that I use these two material is because I wanna get close as possible to my, to my final restoration. I mean, both arches get as close as possible. So you see, mixing the cream with the red, I can have the same effect that we have before. So you can put it together more or less. And this is, this is the first layer, and this is the stain. So the thing that you do, is putting more salmon, for example, in order to get that color. But basically, this is the way that we do it. So this is the ceramic and the composite. And we use the same colors for everything. <laughs>